أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله والصلاة والسلام على رسول الله وآله الطيبين والسلام على أصحابه الغر الميامين رب شرح لي صدري ويسر لي أمري وحل الأقدة من لساني يفقه قولي أما بعد respected scholars brothers and sisters سلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته our today's discussion shall be concerning the status of mental health in Islam of course you see that there are certain people certain individuals who tend to be judgmental about such issues and there are certain people there's a group of people who tend to stigmatize against such issues yes they'll make presumptions generalized assumptions and form judgments they are the people who prevent the sufferers of such mental disorders from seeking help driving them to the brink of suicide and then they are the first ones to issue the fatwa of eternal damnation of course you see if you go to the quran people in specific people have no right to judge whatsoever whether somebody committed suicide or somebody is suffering from a mental disorder or even if somebody is sinning we cannot judge yes we cannot judge if you today see somebody sinning you should consider him tomorrow as the narration suggests to be pure why because how do you know he did not uh, he did not repent during the night don't look at him the same way that you looked at him yesterday no that is the level and how can you judge somebody suffering from a disorder suffering from depression, suffering from anxiety disorder, suffering from social anxiety disorder, and so on and so forth. How can you do that? Yes. There are certain people who come on, they say, you know what? You don't have sabr. Habibi, Baba, have you understood the meaning of sabr? What's the meaning of sabr in Islam? Does sabr mean that you just let everything that will happen, happen? Don't do anything, sit on your bed and take a nap? No. It means to do everything you can and then place your trust in Allah. And th yes, be confident in what is in Allah's hands more than what is in your hands. Yes, do that. But do your part. But And when it comes to mental disorders, how many things can you do? You can take them to a doctor, you can be supportive, you can get uh, you can get knowledge, you can get educated about such issues. You can be supportive, you can help them in their recovery, you can abstain from making inappropriate gestures, and so on and so forth. And you're skipping all of that, and you're asking them to do something, not, not even doing that, you say. Not being patient with them, asking them to be patient. What, what mentality is that? Somebody has a broken bone, take him to a doctor. Don't tell him to do sabr, wallah. Once he has gone to the doctor, then ask him that he see you are taking the medication. Don't worry. Have sabr, have patience. Not that you let him have, move around with the broken bone and ask him to do sabr. That's not the definition of sabr. That's the, that's the definition of abuse. Yes. You're not, you're not helping. You're not helping. And there's a certain group of people who will for example listen to a story of a shaheed of uh, a prophet of a saint and all of a sudden they become judgmental everybody in their friend list go uh, friend list goes to the block list they say all of them are sinners they're not good enough for me pure enough for me the quran says this it says in surah al-fajr chapter 89 verse 15 yes let's go to Chapter 89, verse 15 and 16. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. فَأَمَّا الْإِنسَانُ إِذَا مَبْتَلَاهُ رَبُّهُ فَأَكْرَمَهُ وَنَعَامَهُ فَيَقُولُ رَبِّ أَكْرَمًا As for man, when his Lord tries to test him, he treats him with honor and makes him lead an easy life he says my lord has indeed honored me how many times does it happen that certain uh, times uh, you know things tend to get your way and you try, tend to judge others you tend to judge others yes you are in a good spiritual state although if you are doing this i highly doubt that but let's say 
you are able to pray you are able to fast and there's somebody suffering from depression you're like you don't have sabr you don't have iman and so on because things are going your way do you know what will happen quran says this he says and when Allah tries to test him differently as in when Allah tries to test him again or differently he does what he cuts down cut short his rizq yes what happens he immediately says my Lord has disgraced me you see where you where you went you are now you're now accusing Allah of disgracing you that will happen if you become proud if you become judgmental if you become arrogant then what does the Quran say it says Kalla, bella nay but you do not honor the orphans this is the religion of Allah it's not the religion of judgmenting it's not that religion of ridiculing he says you do not honor the orphans you're not honoring the orphans and what does he say after that and you do not make arrangements for feeding of the poor yes this is the religion the religion of mercy the religion of peace the religion of love the religion of compassion and benevolence let the warmth of love take over stop judging stop stigmatizing this and by the way do you know that certain mental disorders can be caused by genetic factors yes that means it's not the child's fault at all it's not in general but specifically it's not in his control certain are caused by unresolved childhood traumas or childhood abuse or or uh, unintentional substance abuse sometimes and so many other factors that are playing it's so complex you cannot judge you cannot judge with your limited knowledge even psychiatrists and experts cannot pinpoint the cause of certain disorders then who are you to say it's the lack of sabr they who spend their lives who dedicate their lives to certain issues they're not able to pinpoint but somehow you after praying five times a day for two consecutive days or weeks and praying salat for a con for a month consecutively you are able to pinpoint that is the lack of sabr who gave you the authority who gave you the authority to judge yes i, res I request the parents if you are watching this the elders if you are watching this, don't stigmatize don't stigmatize against such issues the media is romanticizing them and at the same time stigmatizing against them that's the problem it's a problem it's a devouring our youth yes how many of us say that uh, removing a stone from a fellow brother's uh, path is sadaqa then what about removing thorns from a brother's from a fellow brother's heart that to prick him every time his heart beats with every second it's killing him inside wallahi you don't know what they are going through you don't know that let there be hope for them let them speak out let them speak out fearlessly yes let them speak out don't let the stigma get the better of you don't let your presumptions about the idea of sabr in islam and about uh, tawakkal in islam don't let it get to you no listen to what the experts say take them to a psychiatrist for the love of god do that please yes these issues need to be addressed if you see if you see the chain of causality of everything we do the most important and the determined most deterministic factor is our mental state and our thought processes and if you're not in a good state of mind if you're not mentally well how can you expect them to give their full to worship of course there are people who uh, who are compromised in their worship due to certain mental disorders especially due to OCD or depression and so on and so forth yes don't judge them don't judge them take them to a psychiatrist inshallah there's hope there's cure there's cure let them live don't let them suffer every second don't let it kill them 
May Allah bless us all and may Allah forgive us all. Wassalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.